Falcons fans, this is episode 15 of Out of Your Falcon Mind, an Atlanta Falcons fan cast. For all the regular listeners, welcome back. Glad to have you. For If this is your first time listening, welcome the hell in to the best Atlanta Falcons fan cast that there might be. Mike, what you say? You ever, have, uh, ever. Best Atlanta Falcon fan cast in the history of the Atlanta Falcons. How about that? Out of your Falcon mind. Did you say 15? Episode 15? 15, 15? buddy. 15. Wow. Hey, I just want to say, we're going to start the show with this. I appreciate all the regular listeners, man. We are getting emails. We getting uh, tweets. We getting uh, Instagram followers. Everything is going so well with this, man. We really appreciate you guys. And uh, it honestly means the world and it just makes it so much fun to do. Thank you. That's right. Yep, I, I uh, totally agree with Mike. And uh, again, my name is John. I'm one of your hosts. Mike, as we just talked to, is the other host on the show. And Mike, we uh, we say every week when we ask people, you know, to have a time, go in there and give us a five star review, and you know, send emails or whatever, you know, because on 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 uh, iTunes, a five star review helps us get up the list of Falcons uh, podcasts. So when somebody searches for a Falcons podcast, we have a better chance of being seen the more reviews that we get. So we got one. Um, we've had plenty. We've had a we've had a, a lot, but we got one, a new one now that uh and what we do is we share these every every time we get one so we tell everybody you know if you write some words for us we'll share it for you you're gonna read it we're gonna read it so we got an awesome one this is from uh, atl pulse and uh this says definitely worth listening to five stars and he said i'm only a fairweather falcons fan so i have really struggled this season to even try to watch a game but I have to admit, after listening to these two explain more about what I should be watching to see improvement in or backsliding, they're willing to talk about both sides of this. I've actually enjoyed watching the games. Honestly, the best part is John's son beating them on the predictions almost every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, well, yeah. And um, uh, know, what's his it, name? Uh, that was ATL Pulse. Hey, good one, ATL Post. I really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, really much appreciated. So much. Yes, absolutely. And that's that's great for multiple reasons. Um, and I read this to Liam this morning, actually, and he was like, he was just, you know, over the moon because that's just, you know, he's 11 years old. He's like, hell yes. <laughs> you know, somebody likes me on the show. Right, um, right. So, uh, but besides that, which, you know, um, the fact that, um, that uh, our show would make a Fairweather fan actually watch more, um, Dude, and, watch be differently. This, and watch differently um i mean uh, let, let me just say this i mean i'm not uh, uh you know when you hear uh people that work with youth and work with you know other maybe disadvantaged people and they say you know what if i can just help one person one kid it makes it all worth it <laughs> that's that's how i feel if i can help one falcon fan i can help one falcon fan become a better falcon fan it was we'll become a, a more consistent and and dedicated falcons fan then damn it this whole thing has been worth it <laughs> all the equipment all the hours, all the hours. All the, everything was worth it everything that's for you buddy we really i really i'm gonna tell you something that honestly means the world to me all yeah, jokes no. aside there because you um uh, just to think that you can that you have a different perspective on the actual football game you're watching because it's something we may say that feels good, man. And uh, um, that you said that we cover both sides, I appreciate that because yep, do, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, all joke, all jokes aside, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's it's awesome. I mean, you know, if like I said, if 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 uh, in any if any you know if any fan like like that, that's kind of like yeah, you know, they kind of suck this year. I don't really want to watch, and then. You know, if they they heard us and want to watch more, then that's that's. I mean, I didn't even think. You know what? That's that's something I didn't even think about when we started this podcast. Me neither. I, I didn't think about that even being like a. That but something it's, it's, it's real. But. And I was saying ATL Pulse. Is that his name? Is that what you say? ATL Pulse. Yeah. Did you yeah, say yeah. ATL Pulse is his name. Okay. Yeah. Um. Tell uh, if you really enjoy the show and you really feel like that, I just would encourage you uh, to tell your friends or your wife or your girlfriend, leave us that five star review and get them to check it out, too. Yeah. Um, like I said at the start of this, I want all people like you, buddy. I want all people um, that are really interested. And like that's a fair weather fan. But 
uh, we just appreciate uh, like the um, enthusiasm that you watch the games with, that you would watch it with a with a goal in mind, or you will watch it to really see and to know uh, instead of just. I don't think you're a fair weather fan, but are you officially are out of your Falcon mind? There it is. And now that you watch the games with a purpose, man, thank you so much. That meant absolutely. The Tell your friends to watch, man, and y'all can all. We would love to shout them out on the show too and give them, uh, you know, they give us a review too. We would love to spread the joy. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. So um, moving on, we do, we got a few emails and this first one, Mike was um, addressed to you. This is from James. And he said, Mike, uh, he apparently knows your love for Matt. So this is why this is uh, directed towards you. He said, Mike, what would it take for you to say we need to move on from Matt? Like will be your criteria for saying, okay, now we got to move on. The floor is yours. <clears throat> James, good question, buddy. I appreciate you. The floor, everybody that can listen to this know that um, my man crushes uh, Mr. Matty Ice over there. I love Matt Ryan. That's my favorite player. What would it take for me to move on and admit that he need to go? Uh, I'm going to shock all y'all and tell y'all that I'm, I'm, uh, Every week, Matt makes me more and more ready to uh, move on. I love Matt Ryan. Uh, I want Matt Ryan there. I want Matt Ryan to have blocking so I can tell if Matt's skills are declining or if Matt is suffering from lack of blocking. I think it's unfair to judge him right now because um, like John just said, I think a lot of what Matt doing is letting that ball go because he don't like to get hit. Uh, he might be rushing passes and doing all. I think Matt Ryan is getting punished this season and he's trying not to get injured. So Matt Ryan is dropping back and forcing throws and trying to get rid of the ball in 1.2 seconds so he doesn't get blasted. And I think the coaching is actually telling him to do that as well. Um, but I will say this, the criteria for me overall is when I feel like Matt Ryan is personally having a input on us losing games like it's some of matt ryan's percentage of us losing games he holds down a major percentage as of right now when we lose games matt ryan is the only bright spot most of the time matt ryan balls and then the team when matt ryan when matt's arm starts losing us games that's i'll be happy to move on to me he's the greatest falcon ever the greatest quarterback we ever had. Jersey going to Raptors, uh, always be my favorite player. But honestly, man, when you no longer can help us win games, uh, you got to go. It, and that's a business. And that's me being a Falcon fan above a Matt Ryan fan. Love him to stay with the organization. Love to see his nerdy kids on Instagram grow up and all that. I love Matt Ryan, everything. His wife seems cool. That family is awesome. I think Matt has been the professional that you would want your team to have as a quarterback. It's not all about field. It's uh, how they carry themselves off the field. Matt never been involved in a scandal. You don't see Matt on TMZ. He ain't with no DUIs. Matt Ryan didn't get caught smoking weed. Matt didn't get caught cheating on his wife. What more can you ask for than the class and dignity that man brought you see Biscuit behind me, the class and dignity that that man has brought to our organization. We owe him the world. but. As of right now, I can't act, I can't honestly tell you that his skills are not declining, which at the start of the year, I said they weren't. These passes, I, I'm not in agreement with. I'm not vouching for Matt Ryan right now. Matt Ryan is playing horrific. Um, but again, I don't know if that's the line or his skills are declining. When he is the reason we're losing games, I'm happy to move on. But James, you tried to get me, buddy. Didn't work. I love you. <laughs> hey, but keep doing uh, James. Great question. Cause that was nobody ever asked me that. I thoroughly appreciate it, buddy. That was awesome. But you yeah. didn't get me. No, that's a good response. Um, but yeah. hold, on, hold on, John. I just want to, I just want to flip this really, really quickly. Yeah. Um, what would be yours for letting go of Matt for moving on? And I think you explained it perfectly because uh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, when he starts hurting the team or like you said, like when he's, when, when his decision making or when his throat, when his arm, whatever, you know, is like you can look to a game or two or three and say, yeah, that's exactly why we lost. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and that, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's the time. But I mean, um, like you said, it's hard to tell, especially over the last, I mean, most of this season. I mean, it, it is a combination of the line being just kind of, I mean, for the most part, except for a few guys, pretty just blah, you know, yeah, not good. 
um mm-hmm. and uh and 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 matt you know i mean like you know we, we talk about it every week i mean if, if if the quarterback doesn't have confidence in the offensive line he's going to say publicly he has confidence of course he is he's not going to yeah, say he doesn't but we know if you've played a sport or if you've played with other guys and you, I mean, you know, there's guys on the team you have confidence in and there's guys you don't have confidence. That's, in. that's true. You know what I mean? So he goes up there, he knows what these guys, I mean, he knows they work hard, but he also knows he gets hit more than any quarterback in the league. And that's a fact. That's just, that's a fact. fact. That's a so, fact. Um, you know, I just I'm, want- sure, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that goes into it. And I mean, and there was a, not to cut you off real quick, but there was a video that went kind of viral, I guess, on, on Falcons Twitter, I guess you could say, uh, from last week's game. And um, it was, I'm sure you guys have seen it if you haven't. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's just some guy pointed out like, okay, this is why, you know, we need to move on from Matt. I think that was the original video that I saw um, or something, some, something to that effect. And basically we were down in the goal, we were in the red zone and uh, we had Kyle Pitts was split out wide on the left. He ran a little slant and dude, he was wide. I mean, he was wide open. I mean, he could have been hit easily and walked in nobody within six, seven yards of him. Matt never looked his direction and he threw right into coverage and incomplete pass. And I think that, I don't know if we end up scoring or not, but regardless, man, like, and, I, you, and you, to be fair, you can probably pick that any play from a week of any team and any quarterback and say, look, he missed it right there. Because the quarterbacks are not going to hit everything that's wide open. Every game. You would, you right, would just hope that in a case like that, in the red zone, like as, as valuable as Pitts is, you would think like that might be maybe even the first read. And then we, I don't know the plays, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, he didn't need it. He didn't even look his way. And then I, asked, I saw a response that said, you know, well, and the, co- the pocket was collapsing and, you know, he probably wanted to get rid of it. So he didn't want to get hit, which is what we talked about before as well. And which is probably true. I watched it over, I watched it like four or five times and yeah, it collapsed, but it was a little bit after that. I mean, like he had, it wasn't like it just all of a sudden just, just came back on him. I mean, like he had time to drop back and set his feet and then he let it go, you know, probably just a little bit too early and didn't see him. But, you know, like, he's, like I said, I mean, that's, that's nitpicking the guy and you can't look at one play and say, yep, that's it. He's, he's mm-hmm. not, he's not making the right. Come on. I mean, that's just, that's, that's any quarterback anywhere is going to make mistakes like that from time to time. It's just going to happen. Now, if it starts happening every drive, then we got a problem. That's, that's what I'm saying. When, when you, there, um, if you understand the sport of football, there's no way you can usually watch the Falcons and put it on Matt. Yeah. Matt, uh, if you look at the start of the season, Matt was playing amazing. He was playing excellent. These last couple of games, man, Matt Ryan has looked uh, elderly. He looked like his skills is not up to par. He looked like he rushed. But again, there's no way uh, that you can accurately even assess him with that line like that. I cannot tell. Because right. if you put Tom Brady back there, the, the same thing would happen. Like you have, you don't have time to throw. You could put mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. When you got a second to get rid of the ball, you look way worse than you really are. I yeah. can't say it for right now, but when it's his fault believe me i'll be the first one on here being honest about it exactly thanks james Um, yep appreciate that james all right and the second email uh, was from brandon and um he said john this first question is not falcon related but i watch the show on youtube and see the guitars behind you uh how 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 long have you been playing and what type of music do you play and i'll read the second part of the question in a second uh, of the of the email um yeah so yeah there's um what I've got two, I've got two acoustic guitars, an electric guitar, a ukulele, and uh, two bass guitars. So yeah, I, um, I've been playing bass is what I play most of. Um, I've been playing bass for 21 years. And um, I started playing because of, uh, if you guys are familiar with the band 311 or Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, you know, they, that when I was growing up, like, it, Peanut was the bass player for 311 and of course Flea, I'm sure y'all have heard of Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. They played the bass like I'd never seen it played before and it just made me want to play it. So um, that's why I, uh, I started playing bass and I picked up guitar. My dad played guitar, my dad played piano, banjo, you name it, he played everything. Um, so I picked up guitar a little bit from him and started playing. Um, not near as good as he was, um, nor do I think I'll get that way, maybe if I really dedicate myself. Um, but uh, no, I love playing bass and mostly mostly uh, reggae uh, type rock music. Um, some funk uh, is always fun to play, but I'll get into metal too. Um, 
you know, I, I kind of like, I mean, I like my, my taste in music all over the place, except country. I cannot stand country music to say mm -hmm. uh, not one bit of it. Um, I can't do it. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much it, man. That's, uh, I mean, I love, I, 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 in fact, on my Spotify, uh, do you have Spotify? Do you listen to Spotify? I do not. All right. Well, every year they give you, like, they give you like a wrapped, uh, thing. And it shows okay. you like, it just basically shows you like how much you listened and who you listened to, who your top artists were and all that stuff. Oh, I would love to see that. That's okay. pretty cool, right? So yeah, they yeah. said, mine said that I listened to uh, spot or to music 90 and 92% more than anybody else. <laughs> and, uh, oh so, man. Uh, I was, uh, so yeah, I guess I listen to music a hell of a lot, yeah. but it's, it's, it's either, yeah. it's either music or, uh, you know, or, or podcast. You know, oh, cool. So yeah. 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 So, but um, yeah. So anyway. You gotta, John, hold on for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, remember what I'm telling you now. Sword and Scale podcast. Oh, yeah? Sword and Scale. Y'all should check that out. That was free promo. Amazing. Podcast. I'm going to. Now I'm going to. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. The second part of the question is, uh, this is Falcons related. Do you think we bring back CP next year and feature him as our running back? Or do they draft or trade for a running back? Uh, and I really like the chemistry you guys have on the show. It's a, it's an easy listen. Well, Brandon, thanks, dude. We think we uh, have a decent chemistry ourselves. Um, We're getting a lot of compliments, man. <laughs> that's for sure. Right. Um, I feel so good I, about myself. I had low <laughs> self-esteem this morning, but right now. Not now, no. I don't know. <laughs> Woke up feeling a little in, eh, and now it's just yeah. like, shit. Everybody loved me. Yeah, okay. Um, Go no, Falcons. Yeah. So, um, do I think they bring back CP? Yeah, I don't, I mean, he, the thing is he's easily doubled his worth this year. I mean, and that, that's for any team. I mean, he's going to make more money next year. Um, so what we'll, and what we said on the last show about getting us uh, having possibly 28 million to work with, and that's before we do any extensions and whatnot that may free up more mm -hmm. money. Uh, I don't see how you don't bring him back just with the overall success he's had, not just as a running back, but as a receiver, mm -hmm. everything. Um, do you feature him? I mean, I don't know why not. The dude's averaging like six yards a carry. I don't, I mean, until he proves that he can't do it. I mean, I don't know why you, we got other needs we need to go out there and get. Now, unless, you know, like you've been saying for weeks now, unless Le'Veon Bell is just like healthy mm -hmm. and mentally into it and really wants to do well and everything is working, mm -hmm. unless something like that just kind of falls in our lap, then I'm good with riding mm -hmm. with CP another year, man. I am too. Yeah. So, and I'm gonna tell you this shit too. Uh, his not only is his six yards a curry or five yards a curry, that's priceless. But man, with that dude for electricity, yeah, man, you bring him back. Nobody gets our Matt Ryan doesn't get our team going like CP. Mm -hmm. No one on the it's team. Energy, man. You energy. gotta bring him back for that alone. Energy, energy nonstop. Alone. Nonstop. Non so yeah, and he get the crowd hype. He get the team hype. I like. He is electric. That we need him for that reason alone. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's. I mean, we'll see what happens. But I mean, that's. Uh, you know, I, I know. You know, obviously Arthur Smith loves him, and mm -hmm. and Dave Ragone loves him. So I mean, I don't know. Like you said, there's some 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 guys just have those intangibles that. Mm -hmm. they bring that they bring to the locker room that you can't it's hard to replace you know mm -hmm. and when, you, when you get those guys on your team you don't want to let them go you know um so yeah so anyway guys great thanks for the emails we really do appreciate it great questions great and, comments uh, great five-star review i'm i'm digging the show the start that's, of this show this all that's awesome. right hell yeah and the email that they sent those two guys if y'all want to email in your own questions comments or anything that you want to say um, and it can be personal, like uh, like Brandon asked yeah. there about the guitars. I mean, it don't matter. You can ask us. Uh, I mean, we we we're not a uh, we said it before. We're not a straight uh, stats Falcons 100. percent It's going to be a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of what's going on in our lives. Because I mean, you know, we're close friends, and you know, we're we're mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Netflix so, and you know what. So I mean, and yeah. everything. So just touching on that. Now you said the uh, uh, email address. Yeah, you the email said, address. Um, email address. Yeah, it is atlfalconfancast at gmail.com. Atlfalconfancast at gmail.com. Y'all can ask anything. Yep. Um, even personal. Now, on a personal note, before we get on to Falcons and Cam Newton and all that, 
<clears throat> I gotta tell y'all a really funny story. If y'all watching this on YouTube, you can see my crazy dog in the background jumping on things. And I'm pretty high up. So how he got this high, this is a little dog. How he got this high, up. it's blowing my mind right now. I don't know. He might can fly behind my back. I don't know. Um, but I but if I want to see a dog a story in the air behind. If I see man, a dog it would trip me out. I'm dude. talking about the number one rated part. If he was just hovering, if he was behind me in a hover, we would have the number one rated podcast overnight on everything. Yeah. So I gotta tell y'all a funny story. Um, he's right here listening to me. He know I'm talking about. Oh, so I gotta tell y'all a funny story about the dog. If y'all have a dog, y'all would know. Or even children. Uh, this is hilarious to me. Um, so. My dog uh, is, he knows how to tell me he, he needs to go outside to use the bathroom. That's what he usually does. When I'm gone away, we have a special blanket. Uh, it's like a money blanket that he knows if he can't go outside, he goes here to use the bathroom. But what my dog does is very similar to a child. When I'm home and I'm playing with him and we having too much fun, he won't say he got to go outside or go to the money blanket. He's going to piss on a carpet and just keep playing like I'm not we not breaking from this fun. I'm having too much fun. So uh, this was I've had this dog for like three, four months. So this has been wildly frustrating. I got a nice apartment. He's pissed on the carpet 250 times by now. I'm sure if I didn't live here, I would smell piss. <laughs> so if y'all ever come visit me, tell me if I smell like this, the unit smells like piss. But so what he did, just did, my dog is learning and I'm, I have a proud dad mom. I have no children. And I just got this dog. This is my first proud dad moment ever in life, okay? I've been trying to teach this dog through positive reinforcement. And what just happened before the show, I got music on, I'm dancing around. He get hyped when I dance around, chasing me around. And we was playing and he just broke away from me and just ran in the bathroom closet area. And I thought he's never done that. So I'm thinking like, what did he run from me for? And I went and looked what he was doing and he was pissing. And I almost shared a single tear because you got to understand what that meant. You got to understand what that meant, okay? My dog processed, oh, well, we're having a great time, but I have to pee. He then clenched his penis muscle, right? <laughs> shut it off. Shut off the flow of water. <laughs> Ran into the closet and peed where he needed to pee and came back out and play. I gave that man two treats and shed a single tear. You know, Biscuit is amazing, man. Just the fact that he did that. I, I just say like, good job, like a hundred times. He lost his mind. He knew he did something good, but I never seen him do that. He's turned into a big boy. He knew how to clinch it. I remember I did. I used to pee on myself. And I remember when I had that moment, you know, I learned how to clinch and run. <laughs> it's a I mean, moment in every man's life. You clinch and run. And he did it, man. Proud this of is, see, this is what I'm talking about. What other Falcons fan cast or podcast are you going to get the term penis muscle brought up? Number one, penis muscle. Clenching your penis muscle is <laughs> if you hashtag clench your penis muscle, that's on nobody. It's going to be one of those. <laughs> and that's ours. Welcome to Out of Your Falcon Mind uh, fan cast. Man, Johnny is, Yates, Mike Kitt. That is awesome. But like, no, really proud moment, man. Just that he, uh, Cause usually he just let it out, just let yeah. it go. And yeah. so he had to, his brain had to think I need to go where it's appropriate. He was like, I'm having so much fun, but wait, 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 wait. I gotta yeah. Be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wait. It'll be a few seconds. He came back. He was probably still dripping. Cause that's what dudes do. You know, he <laughs> tried to get back to the fun, but you know, <laughs> he got back to the fun. I love this little dog, man. Y'all got a, if y'all got a dog story like that, y'all need to, cause John got a wonderful dog named Murphy. I got a wonderful dog named Biscuit. Y'all got a dog. He's doing something funny. Y'all need to let us know. Yeah, and absolutely. Buy your dog some Falcon apparel. If y'all take the picture of your dog in a Falcon jersey, a Falcon hat, in a Christmas Falcon anything, we will post it on our Instagram. I promise. You. Absolutely. Send it yeah. to we'll post it on our Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Send that to us. Dress your dog in any Falcon gear, or your cat or your gerbil, or your like hamster, or Man. your senile grandmother who don't know, <laughs> right? And we will post it, I promise. I mean, you're not dressing no cat, man. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a cat wear a damn thing. Yeah, and that's, that's probably true. You're not, don't, like hell, wait, no, if I you try know. to dress the cat, instead of sending us the cat in the jersey, uh, sh show us how he scratched your face off when exactly. you tried to put the jersey on. Exactly. <laughs> 
Uh, and if we get any senile grandma picks, I'm going to be a little bit disturbed by it, just so y'all know. Um, yes, but I'll laugh. Hey, man, y'all go on uh, uh, um, Instagram and you see these. Can you hear me, John? Yeah, I got you now. Yeah, it broke up there for a second, but that's uh, Zoom every now and yeah. then. Hey, yeah. you go on our Instagram and you check out Biscuit, but also if y'all can get Falcons jersey or anything for your animal, if y'all send us the picture, we will post it on our Instagram and bring you up on the show. I promise. Yep, yep, for sure will. All right. Well, after all the uh all the fun we had Ooh. now, let's get to <laughs> a little bit of Falcons talk here, because that's what we're here for, right? Cam. So a uh, real quick bit of news, and we we could have said this in the last show we did not uh, it's not i mean earth shattering or anything i mean they uh the falcons did release dustin colquitt um our punter um and it was funny because we had just talked about like how morstead was doing so well like shit we'd rather just keep him only this release dude <laughs> so um they did so they released colquitt they kept uh, morstead um so mm -hmm. i guess he's gonna be our full time which is great because i mean last last week i think he was he had three punts and they were all inside the 20. So that's that, that nothing helps you out a, a, a so, so so defense like yep. like a good field position. So, so I just want to show you the power of the out of your podcast. Okay, the power is one. Uh, ATL Pulse is now watching the Gapana Pana Five. You feel me? Same week. I spoke on the Five. You feel me? John got you. was on the Out of Your Falcon Mountain podcast. You'll be out of here. Uh, all right. So you're going to. All right, Dustin. You're going to have to repeat about 20 seconds of that because you sounded like a robotic monster. Okay, here's what I was saying. <laughs> Do you, uh, y'all need to check out the the power of the Out of Your Falcon Mind podcast, okay? It's a powerful show, okay? Because ATL Pulse is watching the game differently now because of our show. That's power. Mm -hmm. On top of that, to show you how powerful Johnny Yates is over here, John spoke ill of the punter, and the punter got fired immediately. Hell out. <laughs> immediately. John got somebody fired the month of Christmas. <laughs> so hey. if you, this is the a savage business. out of your Falcon mind podcast. <laughs> well, we <laughs> if we don't care that you had kids and you were saving for Christmas. This dude put three punts into the 20. John spoke ill of you. You was out the door. Somebody from Falcons Brass is listening to this podcast. I'm hey. telling you. And they taking what we say serious. That's right. And if they are... Um... We also are open to employment. So just hit us up. Yes, um, we are. Yes. And we should be one day. We will be the official podcast of, if I don't even know if they do that, but it, we should be the first. If they That'd do. be amazing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so other than that news, uh, Hayden Hurst did come back to practice this week, which is great news because we'll have uh, somebody else who can catch the ball, which is a plus mm -hmm. considering we don't have too many of those guys right now. Um, uh, and getting on to, I watched about well I watched all of, well 20 minutes worth of uh dean peace press conference today and that dude is a pretty funny guy man he's uh if you've not heard him talk he's an older guy you know he's been around the league for you know 125 years and um you know he coached a lot of great defenses coached a lot of great players so you know he's been there done that and um so they only ask him you know what what they expected from carolina that they expect uh that they would try to run the ball again because you know the first time uh if you remember during the game that uh we played here in atlanta they ran uh for 47 times for 203 yards and um i mean that was the day game that aren't like sam donald ran yeah. on us like yeah. 70 yards or some stupid shit I'll never like that. forget that yeah. yeah so you know he said yeah absolutely so i was expecting to think you know he said you know there's there's teams that think they're smarter than everybody else. And they would assume that, okay, well, they've probably fixed that. So let's do something else. He's right. like, no. he's like, no, I'm going to assume that they're going to come in and say, well, we're going to make them prove that they fixed it, you know? So, and I mean, that's a good point. Yeah. And to our benefit, I mean, to our, uh, well, hopefully to our benefit, I mean, we have looked better against the run over the last mm -hmm. small amount of games. 
Mm -hmm. um, especially last week, you know, we bought and I know, I know Tampa Bay, they didn't run the ball that much, but when, when they did, you know, they didn't get very much. Mm -hmm. I think they averaged around three yards of carry. Um, and they're going to be without with McCaffrey again, because he's on the IR and the dude could not stay healthy. Um, oh man. So the trouble of paying a quarter, I mean, a running back, man, you pay running backs like that type of money. It's a never, it almost never works out. It's some, sometimes, yep, yep. but man, yep. there's so many cases it doesn't. Um, so anyway, there'll be Chuba Hubbard back there again. Um, our boy Chuba Bubblegum. Bubble um, and uh, who, you know, and of course the biggest difference is going to be who's playing quarterback. And that's going to be our, our friend Cam Newton. Cam. Uh, yeah. So uh, looking at Cam's career stats versus the Falcons, well, he is uh, six, six and nine, 57.6 uh, completion percentage. Uh, 216 yards per game, 21 touchdowns, 16 interceptions with a passer rating of 79.4, and that's per stat muse. So not really uh, great numbers against us in his uh, in his history. Mm -hmm. And I, Hold on. I, I just want to interject real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to play Cam New, number one, uh, a few points here. I'm so glad it's not Sam Donald. If he beat us again, I may – oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Uh, but with Cam, I, I want to, I wanna just want to speak on him really quickly. And I want to say this, um, <clears throat> Cam is, is always been split to me of the way I feel about him. Um, I, I, I'm so happy he's back in Carolina. Cause I'm going to tell you this I think that Cam, uh, made that franchise. Cam gave his body for that franchise. Cam sold those seats out. Cam sold his jersey. Sam, Cam made that team popular. Uh, again, it's business. You got to leave at some point, but to, to, I know what he mean to that franchise. And uh, I believe I'm just, I want to see him retire there. I don't want to see him get put out the league. Uh, you made that team, man. And you deserve to go out with that team. Uh, even if this is your last year, go out with that team. And I hope you spent your money wisely. Um, you invest properly and you don't have to play this game to you a third string quarterback. With that said, um, I dislike him as a person like nobody's business. Uh, that that the, sh the shenanigans in a press conference when you wearing big ass hats with feathers in them, like you signing uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence, or you wearing shit that uh, man, little Minas X will wear in a video. Like you seem like you I would never forget when they lost in the Super Bowl. That I was a big, I was a fan of Cam Newton. And when they they lost the Super Bowl, if I ever in YouTube, how he handled that press conference. I never seen that in my life. Um, yeah. It's with class in your press conference. And you um, you sit in that press conference and you say, man, that other team did well and we didn't do enough. And man, it's hurt right now, but we'll be back next year. Cam Newton was in that press conference. And for those who are not on man YouTube, I want you to pardon me, but he was in the press conference and he was doing this. When they were asking him a question about the team, he was like, Mike is looking to left and right and like he was, he was turning his head to it was like if y'all ever had a girlfriend that you pissed off and you was asking her what's wrong what's wrong and she was doing this thing when she turned her head and every time you try to kiss she turned her head to, he was doing that but you talking about a grown-ass man that's a football player that's not man you didn't handle that with Clyde ne I never forgive that and I never I thought that was the worst thing you handled it like a sucker you handled it like a girl um I never seen any quarterback, the leader of a football team, handle a loss like that. And his excuse was, well, you think I was supposed to be happy about a loss. Do you think John Elway was happy about losses or any Steve Young or Peyton Manning? Everybody handled that better than you. Didn't nobody get up there and act like they were seven and I and I took their toy away. And I that that disgraced him to me. He never, I dislike him as a person like you wouldn't believe, but still I know what he did for that franchise. And I I would I like to see people like Emmett Smith think you should leave with Dallas. I want Matt Ryan to leave with the Falcons. I, you know, I just I like to see I like Roddy White leaving as a Falcon. I didn't want him to go to an, a, a team and barely get the but like Julio. I hate to see that, but so I'm happy back. Really dislike him as a person, man. And I hope he loses Sunday. Yep. And on the for me, uh I completely dislike him, and uh, 
I haven't liked him since he was at Auburn and because he's, <laughs> you know, Auburn and Alabama don't get along. So mm -hmm. I didn't like him then. Then he went to the Panthers. Well, end of, uh, you know, division rivals mm -hmm. still don't like you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, couldn't agree more with what you just said. I mean, I, yeah, I do. I respect the guy's talent. He's, he's six foot six, got a Hauser as a freaking arm and, or mm -hmm. did at least before a lot of the shoulder injuries and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, never was super accurate, you know, never much had much touch on the ball. I mean, could throw 85 yards, probably no touch, but, all bullet but, passes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And like that, that, like you said, that, that after the, that thing after the Super Bowl, man, that was just, I mean, that was embarrassing. I was embarrassed for him. I mean, that yeah. was so bad. Um, but he, uh, so he came back to a lot of fanfare this year, did pretty well. And then just got awful he got benched um and uh they they've lost the last two games actually to the to the uh washington football team and to the uh dolphins so they're reeling a little bit they've got a pretty terrible offensive line it's almost kind of like ours um mm -hmm. they've got one decent guy and the rest of them are just i mean if you want to say serviceable they're serviceable mm -hmm. um so it's going to be our crappy defensive line versus their crappy o-line and we'll see who can do something who can crap it out the mess yeah and the only thing that you know and, and, and the thing with cam and he's not going to run like he used to but mm -hmm. if sam Darnold can run on you with yeah with with what they have then i'm pretty sure cam can too um mm -hmm. and getting back to you know watching dmps talk about uh stuff he goes you know he says it's interesting you know he said you know stats don't always tell the the full story and you know even what you're looking at he said so he said, say that the, the interior linemen, like Grady and those guys, they're told on a play, okay, get, like, stay up the middle, rush up the middle, it, to mm -hmm. force the quarterback out, right? So it's up to the okay. ends. It's up to the ends to stay on the outside because that's, that's the, that's the goal is to force Contain those it. outside. But he's like, you know, sometimes you'll have um, you'll have the ends that, or, or just any player, like his, his biggest point was maybe they're trying to do too much. If they would just do the job, so whether it's Dante on one end or whoever's mm -hmm. playing the other end, Okandeje, whoever it may be, if the play is designed for Grady and whoever's next to Grady, Marlon Davis and whoever it is, to, to just bust up the interior to force that quarterback out, well, he's going to – the point is he's going to be forced out to the end if he's out there. But if he's doing something right. else, if he's trying to swim inside and get to him, well, mm -hmm. guess what? Now he's got the whole field to the left or whole field to the right to run. And he says, so it just boils down to the guys just doing, like we talked about it before, do yeah. your individual job, you know, do it. The, and so that's, you know, they're young. And so that's, that's, that's kind of what he's having to deal with this year. Um, they were asking him about the second year players and their progression, like how he thought like Marlon Davidson was doing and some of the other guys. And he, um, he said, he thought they were doing as good. He said, uh, he could, he said, you can't look at it as if they're a true second year player because they're an entirely different system. He said, so you can almost look at that it. That is as, true. He said, you can almost look at it as if they're rookies again, because yeah. he said, because what they did learn last year is how to be a professional, how to conduct yourself, how this mm -hmm. league, how fast this league is, how intense this league is. So they learned, okay, this is what it's like, but they, and now this year it's a whole new terminology. It's an entirely new mm -hmm. playbook entirely. So he said, you know, mm -hmm. they're progressing about as well as he thought, you know, um, still obviously got work to do. Um, but I'm excited, man, because you, we have seen some of the second year guys do pretty well. You know, we can see they're on the edge of kind of like really, and even the young guys, the rookies, the true rookies, mm -hmm. you know, like it'd be interesting to see the second and third year. I mean, hoping that the Stoke coaching staff stays together at least because mm -hmm. um, bringing another system in would just be, I mean, uh, uh, devastating. But. We do that entirely too often. Uh, I think the when you see a team in the NFL that gets really good, it's because they usually the same coach, same offensive coordinator, same defensive coordinator. Yeah, you get right. to do that over when you get to your third and your fourth year in the same system is is when you see magic. Because right. everybody, not something you don't have to concentrate on your route. You don't have to concentrate on your progressions. It becomes subconscious, and you can play off of instinct. Yeah. 100%. And uh, a lot easier. A lot easier. Mm -hmm. And they asked, they asked him about, um, about Grady. Uh, they said, you know, like, and one guy said, you know, how, how important is Grady to the team? You know, not just how he plays, but in general. 
And man, he couldn't have said like, I mean, he, he had the highest of praise for him. And it wasn't just about that. He said, you know, it's not just about uh, the player he is on the field. He's like, you know, certain guys are really talented, but they're not very good practice players. Or they're not very good film watchers. So they're not very, you know, he's like, he's like, he's like, this dude brings it to practice, the energy to practice. He, he goes and watches film. And mm -hmm. he's like, he doesn't, he doesn't just rely on his God given talents and the work that he puts in. Like he, he said, he is a definition of a professional football player. And he said, if you look back at all the great players, he goes, that's who they, that's, that's what they are. And um, they ask him to, you know, if when one of the reporters asked him, you know, uh, who, who would you compare him to as far as he's coached before? And he said, man, he's like, look, he said, Ray Lewis, CJ Mosley, Ed Reed, those types Ooh. of guys, those guys are the ones that, studied like that and they put into practice and they and you know, they, they came to practice with an energy and an enthusiasm and it rubs off because he goes i'll tell all the guys he goes that's what you should aspire to be like that right there as in every mm -hmm. aspect on the field mm -hmm. off the field everything he said mm -hmm. he's like he can't say anything you know i can't say enough about him so that's one of those guys too talk about how cp is so important to us on the offense by that with that energy and what he brings mm -hmm. and grady is just he's that guy on defense mm -hmm. i mean you know, he he really, i mean you know so that's that's one dude i hope they extend and kind of Mm -hmm. you know make it more uh team friendly to keep him around for sure mm -hmm. and it was kind of funny to the end of the conference so he they asked him about uh like you know how they how what how i think it was more along the lines of how uh we would have set up defensively or defensively against carolina and he laughed it's kind of like chuckled like man he's like do you really think that He's like, I'm never going to tell you guys what we're going to do. He's like, do you, he's like, That's he, goes, he goes, because he goes within an hour of this press conference being done, Carolina's watching this press conference. He's like, and if it's mm -hmm. not, he goes, somebody there should be looking at exactly what I said. He mm -hmm. said, so he joked. He said, it was, he's like, it'd be like an active war. If I was like, Hey, guess what guys, we're going to bomb you tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go ahead and be ready for this. Just to let you know. Yep. Yeah. Just to let you know. He's like, so he's like, there's no coach, especially him. Like, I'm not going to tell you schematically what we're going to do or anything else, you know, remotely close to what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this is kind of funny. Um, hey, listen, was, yeah. listen, so I always had a, I had a little take on that. Um, you know, when it's the half and they go halftime and they go in the tunnel and when they come out, it's always at the start of the half, they stop the coaches and they go and like, well, what are you going to do different? What did you see the problem? And yeah. they're like, why in the world would you, why would somebody tell you that the coach is going to give you the most general answer. He's not going to tell you what he's getting ready to change up. Yep. He's, why would he give you the kid that they do that every game? What did you see? What did you, and, and they say something, well, we just got to run better, but they are not going right. to tell you, man, we, you know what I'm saying? They are not going to give you the keys to what they're, they're trying to alter. You feel what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no, it's it's coach. Uh, you scored three points in the first half. What are you gonna do to get it better this time? Um, we're gonna score more. Yeah, we're gonna they to always more. say something like that. So I don't even know why they <laughs> stop them coaches. It's like you gotta do it. They they shouldn't stop though. They can't give you a real answer. And I think they do it. For, I think they do it for the sound bites. They just hope some coach is gonna go yeah. off on some shit. Yeah, yeah, yep. Be like, I'm pissed yeah. off, and we need to. I'm yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah like Saban used to be. Um, I mean, he, he would be hilarious. He's gotten, I think, a little bit softer in his in his older years, like mm -hmm. with some of the reporters. But used to, man, or like Belichick. I mean, just just mm -hmm. the most bland, quick, just kind of you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, so I agree. I think that's just it's pretty funny, man. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think overall with uh, with what the defense has shown us, at least over the last three or four games. I mean, we said from the the episode one on this podcast we wanted to see progression throughout the year and i mean i can't say that we have not seen it i mean i think i mean most guys i mean and we were we're hard on fabian monroe but i mean we are the, the dude is i mean he's not a terrible second cornerback i mean like you know if he keeps progressing i mean i don't you know i think we could definitely uh upgrade it i mean for sure <clears throat> but um i listen so i'm gonna tell you what we have seen that i think john is alluding to is like I, I'm not gonna say we have a and like an ultra talented team. I don't even know that we have a good team. Uh, but I will say this: our team is very young, mm -hmm. and from week to week, if you if you point to individual players, you can see progress. Mm -hmm. So it may not be like you want it to be, or you can see the progress in the young players. They are learning. They are tackling better. They are performing better every single game. So that's what we're saying. They and we're not saying they best they're gonna be. We're not even saying they good right now. But you right. see people getting better every single game as they learn the system, 
and as they learn how to play with each other. Yep. And this is a, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. This, and this is not on the show sheet. So you have no idea that I'm going to ask you this. Okay. Um, I saw a, uh, a poll that 92, nine, the game here in Atlanta, local radio station did, I guess it was with, I guess it was their, uh, one of their shows. Um, and they graded Arthur Smith, uh, thus far, um, in the season. Um, I think the best grade he had was a B minus. And, and so like one of the two, one or two dudes gave him like a D or a D minus. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll ask you on the spot, like if you just look in overall, knowing everything he's had to deal with and, you know, from like, what would you, what would you grade him as? This I'm so far? Honest. I'll be honest. So, I think the perfect for my personal opinion, I think the perfect one was B minus. And I'm going to, um, that your roster is shit for the most part. You can't expect you to make uh, my sugar out of shit. Like I'm, I'm not expecting, uh, you know, cheesecake out of a piece of right. doo-doo. So I'm not, I'm, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is what I'm saying. Why I'm saying I would give him a B minus. The dude brought a different mentality to our team. He's tough on our players. He brought a more creative play calling system. And whether you like it or not, he improves young players on the offense and defensive side of the ball. They get, they are getting better. Um, he can't actually go on the field and make people run. These, these are young guys learning a new system. That's damn near like you're going to lose a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what he's dealt with, uh, no real blow-ups, no, again, I think he's handled everything with class and dignity. Uh, that man said everything right in the press conference. Um, and again, I've watched him improve. Right. That's when you you don't get to see that from your coach. You see him doing stupid shit at the start season that you don't agree with. You say, well, we hire this dude per game, making better decisions, per mm -hmm. game, being more aggressive, believing in the team, per game, just making better decisions. Per game, even when our team loses, I see progress from individual players on a week to week basis for the most part. That's going to pay off next season. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with the dude yet. And two, again, the same thing kind of with Matt. When we give you shit, I can't really judge what you produced with it. Right. So when that same way, and you give him this roster with this offensive line, you can't say, well, he should have turned his whole team around in a season mm -hmm. with, man, without Julio Jones, without Calvin Ridley, and with a shit line and with a really a shit defense you should have made the playoffs and, and, and what if we should have won 10 games? We yeah, right. think we should have won nine, eight games. That's kind of with young players learning a new system for my money. You're not an A. I won't give you that. I won't even give you a B because of how you started off the season. A B minus to me is the perfect grade. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I uh, not to be boring, but I mean, I, I can't, I can't disagree because a lot of what you just said. And I mean, you, you, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the hate or the D's or something like that because I mean, I don't, I, like you said, I mean, and I, I know the culture and the world that we're in, it's like, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. And like everybody wants immediate results and they want you know things turned around like that. I mean, it's, it's not with what we came into with what, like you said, we are, we got a ton of guys on one year contracts because they have to be, that's all we had mm -hmm. money to spend. Yep. Um, so, and, and yeah, he's a rookie head coach. And like we talked about last week, he's 39, which I, did, I just didn't realize he was 39. I, I mean, I should have known that, but he, I had no idea. Do you um, know how young that is for an NFL coach? That's, that's me and crazy. you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so, you know, I, I just – I think he's done a good job. He's as you have made mistakes, absolutely. That Washington game, all on him. Mm -hmm. We should have won that game. Yep. Um, and that's, and that was him getting conservative way too early. Yep. Um, and you know, I mean, it, I don't, I don't expect perfection. And, uh, one thing I heard, I think it was Chris Mortensen at ESPN or one of the other, uh, guys that was on a radio interview earlier this year. Um, one of the, the hosts asked him, you know, his opinion and what he thought, how he, would he be successful or not? And he said, I think he'll be very successful. The main reason being is he's one of the most open-minded guys that he'd ever met in the coaching, mm -hmm. in the coaching business. He said, you know, you meet a lot of coaches that are just very, very 
Like, this is my style. Dang this Quinn. is what I'm going to do. And this is it. You know, he said, this guy will take, this guy will take uh, any ideas from anybody. It could be a player. They, can, they may come to him with a suggestion. He's going to listen to that suggestion. And if it's viable, he may actually implement it, you know, which is great. Because, I mean, I'm a pretty open-minded dude myself. So, like, I, I, I like hearing all different thoughts, all different, like, I don't, I don't run my business that way. You know, like, right. uh, like I, I, this is the only way to do it. And that's, I mean, like, mm-hmm. if somebody else got a good idea, I'm going to listen. You know, so I mean, like it's uh, that's to me, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be minus is right, right about right where it should be. Um, and hopefully, as we get some players, then you know, that goes on up. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just want to throw that in there because I just thought about that earlier. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, man, getting back to the game. Um, we lost Damn. last time, we, we lost last time 19 to 13, and a game that we should have won. We got opportunity after opportunity in that game, mm-hmm. and we just did not take advantage of it. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel pretty good about this game, to be honest. With, I just feel like we're playing, even though we lost last week, and we, uh, you know, we had the win against the Jaguars, and we lost against the Patriots, and, of course, the disaster against the Cowboys. Um, I just feel like we're, we're starting to gel in certain areas. The offensive line's doing a hell of a lot better job running the ball, and it's going to come down to that again now. If we, mm-hmm. if we, can't, if we can't run, then – it's going to be hard, but I think it looks like they're starting to put something together as far as the running mm-hmm. game goes. Mm-hmm. So if we can run the ball, and like I said, man, I just hope that Matt – I mean, that that, Pan, that Panthers defense, that front seven is pretty stout. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he got, he got hit pretty bad the last time against them, so I don't expect it to be much different this time around. Um, but if we could just see any improvement in the pass blocking, man, just like give me something. Like give the man like one more second, something. Just one more second. I think that he's I mean, proved consistent. It's what I was saying to James at the start. Matt Ryan has proved consistently over time. If you give him time, right? One of the best quarterbacks. Every time he got you, you give him time. Uh, with this line, this may be the most I've seen him get punished in a yeah. season. Like he he is getting. I'm surprised Matt Ryan isn't hurt, man. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm I'm so surprised he's not limping or he. Dude is a you talk about tough. He may be a nerd, but that's a tough nerd, man. Yeah. That dude is because he get a beaten every game mm-hmm. and he get right up and he don't miss no game. He don't even miss a, a series. Yeah. He don't even miss a play. I man, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not even being funny. And this is what you expect about Matt Ryan. So for several years since Matt Ryan been playing, I'm not saying every year, a few years Matt Ryan played. I didn't know who our backup quarterback was. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was like the end of the year when the season was over, I was trying to think back of who the backup quarterback was. And you don't know because he never got on the field. Yep. When whoever Matt Ryan's backup quarterback is, it's like the first lady at the White House. You getting paid, you getting a free ride, you know? Best job in the world. Man, the best, Matt Ryan's backup quarterback is the best. You get paid to watch him and just talk to him. Yep. You exactly. never play. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't, uh, I don't know if we got, if we're going to have the ability to to block um, better this time around, just because it's going to be the same guys coming at him. So, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know that it's going to be any better, um, but, you know, hopefully with the game planning and we've seen them once already, we know what they're going to bring. So, you know, we'll be able to, to hopefully get something better out of it, you know, and, uh, with having Hayden Hurst there and Kyle Pitts, maybe Russell Gage can build on that on that uh, performance he had last week, you know, and, and get out there. So and and we are we have been um, running the ball significantly better. Yeah, that's that been that's time. that's been huge. Yeah. So I think that I always say, man, if you can give him eighty yards or hundred, then you can't pin. Uh, the logic here is this: even if you give us like man, like eighty yards rushing. The defense can't pin back their ears on Matt Ryan and come right. like that. They can't. Mm-hmm. They will always hesitate. Is this a run or pass? When yep. they kind of know it's a pass, they come in full out. I told y'all the last game we played, the announcer said on third down they come and Matt Ryan just doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. And That's that Panthers. Uh, yeah. And the last time we played the Panthers, we ran for 34 yards. So that's what's going to happen. Doesn't stand a chance. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, what's interesting, too, uh, the Panthers actually last week, they fired their offensive coordinator, Joe Brady, which was kind of strange. You don't really see that happening kind of midseason like that mm-hmm. or you know, late in the season. Now we're at what, week 14 now. But 
Um, so Jeff Nixon took over and he's, I think he's been the, the assistant uh, offensive uh, head, like line coach and works with the running backs. Um, and I think he came out and said, they're not going to change the offense. That, I mean, they're in week 14 there, but there's not, a, it's not like you can just totally change the offense this far. In right. The season. Right. Right. So, I mean, but every coach is different. So we'll see how he calls the game, um, you know, as opposed to how the first time looked, you know, it's going to be, this is going to be different. We got a new, new, new offensive coordinator, new, new quarterback um, that right. we're playing against. Um, so it'll be interesting. I don't know. I, I, uh, do you have any, you have any feel on, on the score? Um, I, I don't know why I believe this. I just, I don't believe, I think both teams are going to suck on Sunday, like really poor. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I think, uh, like, like the suck will cancel each other out. So I think the suck, it'll be a suck bowl and it'll be like, 10 to 7 or something like that. It was, I think it would be a, a very boring game. I don't think we was going to get a lot of points because they can't block for Matt Ryan. So we won't – so we hope – run. I think we score about 10 and they score about 7. So you go 10-7? 10-7. Yeah, I'll go um, – I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I mean, uh, Carolina is one of the – I think they're – about four from the bottom uh, when it comes to the offense. I mean, mm -hmm. I, we're actually we're actually better on offense. Um, if that tells you anything. So, um, yeah, I think uh, we'll put, definitely hold them to under twenty. I don't see them scoring. Uh, I, I think we're going to go maybe. I'll, I'll be. Uh, you know what? I, I think I think it's twenty to twenty to thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Twenty uh, Falcons. Okay. I think twenty thirteen Falcons. Okay. And Liam Liam is not here, but he uh, he predicted. Uh, okay. Uh, he he went on a limb. He went he went offensively. He said thirty to seventeen Falcons. Damn, Liam. Okay, so he yeah. think we, we running and passing. On. Okay, uh, if we score thirty, that means everything's working very 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 yeah, well. Yeah, that's very. If if Liam get us a, again, I would love for Liam to be right. To be honest. oh yeah, me too. I, I would yeah. I would li I would not like a 10-7 game. That's boring to watch. That's that's boring to live tweet. I, I need a good game. <laughs> yes, it is. It yeah. really is. It really yeah. is. So uh, I I need something to live to something exciting to live tweet and something I would love for Liam to be right. If he keep doing us like this, we got to, I told you, I think Liam knows somebody at the organization. We got to tap into that. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how, kind of how uh, we're, we've got it lined up. So we'll see, man. Um, man, McCaffrey you know, is uh, for that talent to never be on the field. That it? sucks, man. For them. Gee, after you pay, you put, all that money and you just mm -hmm. see it on the sideline. All that money just sitting on the side, just an ATM yeah. on the sideline. I hate this. I mean, it's like, dude, it's like after we paid Devonta, he was never the same. Yep. Yep. Never the same. Yep. Same thing. And we would yep. thank God we didn't pay him what they paid for. I'm going to be honest. Caffrey, but Jesus. Yeah. I think that's how they felt about Le'Veon Bell and mm -hmm. his skill. When he took that year off, I haven't seen that skill set since. You know, yeah. when, when he was with the Steelers, I thought to myself, the, he'll be the greatest all around back we've ever that dude could have been block, catch yeah. and run Everything. like nobody except the only one close to him ever was Marshall Falk and that mm -hmm. and he wasn't no hell of a block I mean Bell could do everything he was young and I yeah. said we we seeing the best all around back there ever been and that year he took off man I yeah. I don't see it but that's why I think that we, that we could get him for Ray Rice money really I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I you would just like just to see because he can yeah. still catch and run. I would love to have him on the odds team. I think he would be perfect for our offense. He he wanted like you remember when they said we getting players who could do multiple things. Right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't uh I don't have any uh any idea or any uh prediction that this is gonna be a, a very exciting game either. Um just the fact that it's a divisional rival, it's Cam, you know, it's gonna be I hope, we gotta I hope enjoy it. that. Yeah, no. I hope, I hope it's. I hope it's. I hope it gets a little chippy. I hope the guys kind of get no, into. No, I. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I hope it does because I. I believe it to be the last one with. Yeah. With us and Cam and um and he loves to play us because we go back and forth. We we've had man when they had Keekley and we had Julio. Yeah, man, man. We had some bet. We had some. We it's, played. We had some good football, man. I never forget some of those games. Like we yeah. with Thomas Davis. We we had. We had some battles, man. Yeah. And then the overall series were actually 33 and 19 against the Panthers um, in the history. I would so, have never guessed that. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
And like I said, Cam and Cam's only beat us six times. So I mean, mm. and I think he's played 15 games against us. So um, yeah. yeah. And he got that one uh one that stands out to me is when he got stoned at the goal line by Dion mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. ago. He's gonna thought that he's gonna waltz in and freaking Debo just blew his ass up at the, the one that I never forget. Uh Matt Ryan threw a bomb. Oh, and Julio. I don't know how Keekly, how he ended up on Julio Jones. It was him and yeah, somebody yeah, else. Yeah. And Julio Jones went up from, he was behind Keekly and jumped over his head, took yep. the ball out of his hand, then turned around and ran it. And I said, Julio to go. Yeah, man. <laughs> Julio, I love you, man. I miss you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I did was healthy. Yeah. Um, and still here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, that pretty much wraps up the review or the preview, I mean, of the Panthers game. We'll see how it shakes out and we'll do a, a review show either on Sunday or Monday. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we're recapping a win. I feel pretty confident about it. I don't I know, know why, but I just feel confident. I don't know why either. We, we out of our falcon mind? Yeah, we out of our falcon mind. Mm -hmm. um, and dude, I got to tell you, man, before we go, and, I, and, I, and I, am, I, am, I'm, I am years and years and years late to this. And I don't know if you've seen the show or not. What is it? Um, uh, but The Wire. Okay, so we're gonna have a thing at the show now. It's called it's gonna be called underrated overrated, right? And I will tell you this. Have you uh, watched it? Brought, huh? Have you watched the whole thing? I've watched the whole thing twice. <laughs> it's okay. really old, right? I know it that's what I'm amazing. saying. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it is amazing. It's, yeah, it is so, a, it's an amazing piece of work. Yeah. Oh, right. Because I mean, and I don't know how I missed it because it was right during the time I think of Sopranos. And I watched the Sopranos was. religiously. I watched the Sopranos, yeah. And so I don't know how I watched the hell... that twice too. Yeah, we did too. We got the like the box set. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how the hell I missed and both of us. I mean, you know, we love that type of shit, you know, and like um, I just heard and it keep you in it, don't it? Every yeah, one of them keep you intrigued. So, somebody something happens something, every time. I, I can't. I forgot who I was talking to. They're like, "Man, that might be the best show ever written." And I was, yeah. and, I was and I keep hearing it. And I'm like, "How did I not see this? This the is dude, like this is this is from 2002 to 2008. I think was the yeah. the time that it was going on. So anyway, man, we we just started season two last night, and man, dude, I, I love it, dude. Hey, did you see um Omar? Yeah. 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 you know oh, he yeah. passed away yeah he dude yeah that, a he's fantastic an amazing actor, actor right yeah amazing and uh, actor. michael uh michael b jordan yeah playing yep. wallace yeah you know like i was like and i didn't recognize him at first i was like damn is that michael b jordan yeah so it got so many people in it that you've yeah. not seen him somewhere before but i can't couldn't really i mean it, it, idris elba man i mean like, yeah yeah amazing a gangster yeah, yeah. idris elba so yeah. i say uh they're great acting uh if y'all didn't see the wire that great show. I'm going to yeah. tell you what my favorite show is of all time. Uh, I have every DVD and, and y'all might think that this is bro code or whatever. This is just Entourage to me. Was the man. I got all man. the DVDs of Entourage, man. Uh, yeah, man, Vinny Chase and the boy. And I have watched that. Yeah, I'm not. It's 12 seasons or it's, it's either 13 or 12 seasons and they got a movie. I ran through them. I'm not even being funny. I've watched entirely 13 seasons, nine to 10 times. <laughs> I know every episode <laughs> word for word. Like I can tell you what's coming next. Yeah, yeah. Episode, I could tell you what the person is going to say. That's how much I watch. I, I love that. That's one of my favorites. And that dude is one of my favorite people. He got a new um, Grenier. His name, Adrian. Grenier. Adrian Grenier. Yeah. 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 He's a dope person. Y'all go to his uh, Instagram. Y'all see what he do in the community. How that man try to help the world. That that's dude is awesome, man. Yeah, I agree. Um, man, if I had to go, you didn't ask, but I'm just telling you. Um, if I had to pick a show, okay, there's a few, there's a few. Let's there's a few. Cause we we we've talked about before Peaky Blinders, and that's something that not, not everybody has seen. Yeah. But if y'all haven't seen Peaky Blinders on Netflix, I'm telling you, amazing. It is, it is maybe the best writing yes. and the best acting. And I'm not even, I'm not kidding, like of any show I've ever seen. I mean, like I, it is some of the best just pure writing and acting I've ever seen. So I I want to I want to piggyback on that. There's no show I've ever seen where every actor was like a top tier act. So it's yeah. like it's like eight Michael Jordans on one show. Like there's all award winning actors on the same show. Yeah, it's amazing. You could pick yeah. anyone and, and put them as a main character on the show. Yeah, amazing um, show. And we talk about shows I've watched uh, uh, multiple times. So Parks and Rec, I've probably watched or we've oh, watched love it. over and over again. For I love years. April. Um, yeah. 
you know, of course, the Sopranos. Um, like we watched Entourage religiously too, so I, that's definitely up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, I, and we've talked. We, you've watched Shit's Creek, right? I've saw that twice. That is yeah. y'all. That shit is hilarious. Dude, Shit's Creek is unbelievable. I would, is that over or are they coming back? I think that's over. No, they're done. They're done. Yeah. That was a ama- that was again cast amazing yeah. cast everybody funny from mm-hmm. the mother the father the daughter the brother and like the brothers on yeah, he took off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just, I mean, every episode, you're, you're, yeah, you're everyone, laughing, every single episode. I mm-hmm. mean, it was hysterical. Um, but yeah, was, um, and then we've watched some other ones recently that, um, you know, that uh, we like. But um, we'll, we'll have like, we'll do like a, a Netflix episode or something. Got to do that. And here's what I, but, here's what I want to say to y'all too. Where y'all are that, it, y'all have y'all's own personal shows and y'all's own things watch and, and y'all think is amazing tell me about it and tell john about it you need to email mm-hmm. us and what just show it could be a show on man i got hulu i got prime i got i got man uh disney i got, got netflix whatever it is just tell me and i can check it out you know yeah, be absolutely cool to get you guys suggestions um so john here's what i want to do to end the show uh yep. we want to do underrated overrated i'm gonna do you pick one and how do i I want to do underrated and I have you pick something overrated. You can pick anything. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm going to do underrated. I have one that I want to really talk about. Hey, you know, what's underrated. So I told you I may have a girlfriend, right? So we had a conflict. Oh, sure. And, already? Uh, already. It was, it was so minor, but it, it was, it was, she was doing uh, something that was really bothering me. Mm-hmm. And I had a choice in how to handle this. And the way I would usually handle this would be uh, extremely immature. I, the, what I had on my mind was uh, extremely immature. I called two of my friends just to explain the situation. Uh, I'll be honest with you. They both gave me very childish, horrific advice. And I, and I, so I had to choose between three bad things. Um, and I was going to pick one of them and it just dawned on me, well, you know what? I, I could just call and be honest and tell her like, I'm not appreciating what she's doing. or I don't like this. And, uh, and that might be awkward because you don't want to have a fight when you never had one before and you, and you don't want to be whiny. And mm-hmm. so many things are going through your head. Like I, I don't want to really do it. And, um, but I, all in all, I settled on, I should just call and be honest this thing to her and we should discuss it and that takes two people being mature because if i'm immature she reacts immaturely but even if i'm mature and how i bring it to her if she immature in her reaction we still have an argument i'm gonna tell you my friends was telling me to to handle it in a way because she would handle it poorly and this is this is gonna go bad and i handled it in my own way in a mature way and i just called her and i told the truth i was honest and she handled it in the her, just the best way I could ever you feel what I mean yeah. in like a grown adult way and we had a conversation about something that we didn't agree on and we came to an agreement on it and it ended up being like a three four hour conversation we came to an agreement uh it was no problem we had an understanding and we moved forward in like amicable fashion underrated just calling and saying what's on your mind without no gains, uh, man, manipulation or trying to prove a point to the other person. Just saying, honestly saying, hey, this is kind of bothering me. What do you, what do you feel about this? This is how I feel. How do you feel about it? She said, then y'all have a grown adult conversation. Uh, so I called my friends back and I say, I never call you for advice again. <laughs> Because you gave me horrific. Had I listened to you, I surely would have lost a girl I really care about. So underrated, grown-up conversations. Two things. Uh, good job. Thank you. Sir. That, that was great. Um, you uh, you may have a career in some type of uh, relationship. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, mending. Uh, number two. Uh, mm-hmm. Call me next time. I will. Uh, call, I, you, I, you know what I thought about? Break. I should have called Johnny Yates. <laughs> I knew what I should have done. What the fuck are you thinking on that one? All right, that, so, I don't I was um, out of my Falcon mind. <laughs> um now uh yeah, so for overrated, um okay, this, overrated. This, yeah, overrated. And this is just off the head off the top of my head. And this is we okay. were on we were, we, since we were talking about shows. Now I'll probably I'm gonna get killed for this. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, overrated uh friends. 
Okay. Ooh. Hey, we about to get a hundred emails. Nobody's. Ooh. Dude, why I do you say that? I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I couldn't get into it, man. I just. I, I didn't. I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I mean, Ooh, just, we gonna get it for this, man. We cancel. Enjoy the show, y'all. We we we've, we've disrespected. I mean, I like that. I like Matthew Perry. I liked uh, you know. Jennifer I like Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Of course, I, you did. that was. But I mean, that was, yeah. But yeah, but no, I just didn't get it. I don't. Know. I, just, I didn't get it. I mean, I just I you know yeah. So that that that's that's my overrated that I'm gonna get destroyed for. So oh, we gonna get man. <laughs> hey y'all, the views and uh, opinions expressed on the audio. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue us we don't got no problem with nbc i, I listen no i love nbc i love you jennifer aniston you hey okay always... we'll, we'll, on, we'll, end on, we'll end on this speaking of uh, i think yeah, it was yeah. on i think it was nbc have you seen um oh man what was the name of the show uh damn it it was the one uh where the plane disappeared and came back uh, like five years later. Yeah, I always wanted to see that. I never see. I know what you watch that about. show. Yeah, it's a good I, show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I can't think of the freaking name of it right now. Um, I'm gonna tell you, it always seems so far fetched. I had to hear somebody else say it was a good show because I thought it could have way missed. With yeah, that you got. Uh, yeah, no. Um, you got to watch that show. Um, because okay. it, it'll, it'll. Uh, I'll look at. I'll look it up in a second. Uh, okay. Manifest. Manifest. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, do you gotta watch it? They 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 signed on for one more season. Um, oh, so it'll, people it'll, 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 Yeah, it'll hook you in. It'll hook you okay. in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Never been wrong. So you know, trust never, me. Hey, on John one. has never. John has never yeah. met. Hey, so hold on for a minute before we go. I yeah. I, I did. Uh, okay, think of some stuff. Uh, it's all things that John has put <laughs> me on to, and I, I'm a I'm gonna rattle some off because I did. I had some. Okay. Uh, home inspections. Uh. 311 for, for the most part. Uh, what is it? Peanut butter pie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, peanut butter pie. If y'all don't know what a camera pole is, it's it's a life altering uh, device. <laughs> Johnny Ace, uh, really, uh, uh, what is the coffee that you... Uh, the, what is the drip coffee that, that you had me drink one time? It was just like a special coffee that you made at home. It was amazing. It was, it was strong. Oh, man. Because um, I forget, but it was a special coffee yeah. that John had that was uh, great. It was uh, the, I, it's really 20. Oh, um, the uh, the song. This is, what's the band with the song that the dude killed himself? Um, it's obviously E. Is it Everlast or Everclear or something like that? It's like a band that you put me on. It's an amazing band with the song that I love. You, um, you remember you said the a lead guy, he, he did this song, and then I guess there's been so many dudes, man. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, up, you know, uh, John, I can't think of that. You that killed himself, he put a note, and then in the note, he was saying, uh, mm. oh, uh. You talking about Avenged Sevenfold? Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Avenged yeah. Sevenfold. Okay. Um, Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, yeah. Peaky Blinders. Black Mass. Um, Liam. This I don't think John has ever missed. Uh, <laughs> he's the the guy's never missed. Uh, if y'all need any, uh, I I I'm gonna call him John the Taste Maker. We gonna get him a little. <laughs> business thing on y'all need anything like when y'all want some food or anything y'all don't want to know you don't know where to go you don't know what to watch right out of your falcon mind cast attention johnny h don't at me with it i'll <laughs> get right to, and i'll get right on it yeah he'll get right on he will tell you the food or whatever you need to know john pretty I'll much tell you know you need to leave that girl right now yes yes it's not good for you it's not or, good for you or you need to just man up yeah, you man, and and I manned up, Johnny. I should have called. I did. I manned up. It was. The, I'm gonna tell you what. It's crazy. You, it was the hardest thing to do. Was the was the most simple thing. Yeah. I don't know why that is for men just to call and be honest. That's that's really retarded. But right. Well, um, you know, we're going on uh, next year. Will be 20 years of marriage. So you just let me know when you need that type of advice, buddy. I got you. 20 years of marriage. John is at 20 years of marriage, and I'm at like. 
Negative 19. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have. I'm like BC. You remember before? I'm like BC. Yeah, I'm not BM. even in the one. Yeah, I'm like, like you know. Before marriage. I'm, yeah. yeah, before marriage. BM. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I uh, hope you've really enjoyed all of this madness that we've talked about in this episode because it might be the funnest, funnest one we've had. It really, so and I'm gonna tell you why. No. Uh, James, ATL, Pauls, all you guys, man, y'all really made our day with them, with them questions and them uh, comments, man. If I yeah. start with you, that was awesome. Definitely. So, uh, guys, hit us up on uh, the email atlfalconfancast at gmail.com. Um, out of your falcon mind on Instagram. Out of your effing mind on Twitter um to join the facebook group just search out of your falcon mind and of course uh you can watch us on youtube like uh james did or brandon no, i'm sorry brandon did i'm sorry brandon yeah did. brandon watches on youtube so watch us on there subscribe like uh follow five star reviews on itunes guys like, keep them coming uh that means so much to us it really does i mean i'm not, I'm not just saying it. it really really means a lot nah, to brandon um, you the man for the question so, james you're yeah. the man for the question hl pause you the man for the review man i love y'all thank you yeah yeah so we'll catch you guys sunday or monday after the falcons beat those uh those panthers and uh we will be uh on to week 15 at that point so you guys have a great rest of the week enjoy the weekend mike peace thank Later. you we are